All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our very first webcast on the subject of UFOs and aliens. We've been wanting to do this for quite some time. It's not that we're tired of Bigfoot. Well, yeah, we kind of are. But you know what, guys? There is so much out there to talk about, and our buddy, my co-host, Sweet Sassy Glassy, has Dot made com. amazing pendants, and we want to start sharing these with the world. Look at these. Look at these alien pendants. Do you guys see it? Okay, Tim, I'm bringing you up. Show yours. Okay, all right. Here's the green one right here. Oh, my gosh. The truth is out there, and it's in your hand, Tammy. Yes, this is the real deal. And then, Investigator Steve Alcorn, do you have your pendant? Uh, I've sort of kind of misplaced it tonight. Oh, no. Bomb. And he's Crap. not getting another one. No more uh -oh. freebies. <laughs> <laughs> Since Steve is in the hot seat, today we really wanted to focus on Steve because he's been wanting to talk about aliens and UFOs for a very long time. It is his specialty. Right, Steve? Uh, before I was uh, in the big... But I did a lot of research on UFOs. Now, so, yes. you have a family connection with UFOs. Yeah. Uh, my mom, when in 1966, she saw her very own UFO for the first time. It's, it's quite an amazing story. Um, she, They lived on a farm, and they had a big pasture, and it was right next to the road. And so she um, and my granddad was in the car, too, and my uncle. And my grandmother and my other uncle. So there was four of them in there. And um, she looked out the window, and there was a giant, and I mean giant, uh, probably the way she describes it, she said it's as big as her house. And I've measured the front of my house here, and uh, it's 25 feet across. So, And it would have been about 20 or 25 feet high. And she was within 30 yards of this thing. It was silver, you know, like a almost like a merc. Mercury wow. type, uh, color, and uh, she couldn't see any windows, doors, rivets, anything like that. Uh, but she was in within 30 yards of this thing, and it was huge. Uh, she saw it for about eh, a couple seconds, you know, and then it just took off straight up into the air. Now you uh, know there is, said, you know, I'm trying to cut you off, but there was another person that saw a UFO, President Reagan, and talked about it freely. And right. Jimmy Carter Reagan saw it. both. Yeah, both those presidents have been open and have both talked about uh, seeing UFOs. Reagan saw his while flying in an airplane, um, and he asked. He actually asked the pilot to chase it, and they chased it for a while, and then it just shot up straight into the air. and And he said that he went as soon as he got off the plane, he had to tell Nancy all about it. You know. So what I'm and trying so, to say is that your your mom is right up there with other credible people. Two presidents of the United States have sighting, have had sightings like this. Absolutely. And so, my mom is the most the most honest person I, you'll ever want to meet. She would not, you know, make up a story like that. So it's absolutely in my And mind, she doesn't eat true. like any of those wild amenity mushrooms. She's not a hallucinogenic <laughs> drug addict, is she? Like other people we know. <laughs> my mother my mother would not uh, do anything of the sort. No. She doesn't well, even drink alcohol. <laughs> so that being said, you probably take this to heart. You, Steve Alcorn, believe that UFOs are indeed real. The question is, Steve, could it have been a military uh, test aircraft, which it could very well possibly have been, you know, or was it from another world? Well, my mom struggled with that. For years, she's very, you know, she's she's a church-going woman, and and so it's hard for her to, you know, comprehend what it might have been. But in her mind, it would have had to have been, you know, like a government experiment or or a governmental aircraft or something. Uh, she says, but I've never seen anything like that before, and I've never seen anything like that since. And she's told this story many, many times to me, and the the story never changes. So whatever she saw that day, and my granddad saw, and, and the other, actually, the other people in the car never, um, never came forward and said they'd seen it too. They always denied seeing it. But my mother and my grandfather did. 
but anyway, she's always struggled with whether you know it could be something from outer space or was it, you know, something from the Earth. And she said she just never seen anything like that before or since. And so yeah. It's, okay, so we got to talk about this. If it is a secret, that, if it's a secret military vehicle being tested by our government, military, et cetera, whatever, whatever, then if they're testing this kind of equipment in plain visibility where other people can just randomly be driving by and see this stuff, they're dicks. Why would you want to mess with people like that? You'd want to try to keep this stuff hush-hush, right? I mean, the government has tried very hard to keep Area 51 quiet, things of that nature. Uh, I mean, why would absolutely. they be testing military vehicles like that? I, and I didn't hear all your question, Rick. My bandwidth is kind of messed up. I'm sorry, Steve. My question is really quick. If it is military testing right. um, secret aircraft, why would they be doing it in broad daylight? They would be dicks for doing that to innocent people who are like driving to church or whatever. All of a sudden, they see this thing that's way out of the ordinary. Why would they mess with people if that was the case? Yeah, that's something that I, I've never understood myself. I mean, this thing was right out in the open, and it was during the day. It wasn't at night. Uh, it was it was floating above. The cows, you know, and you hear all these cattle mutilation stories. Oh my God! So okay, see, see, so, was, so you know, brought that up. Not Steve. that high. So Steve, you brought that up. Cow mutilations, for real. I remember that back in the seventies, and that scared the hell out of me as a kid. Are they really like secretly laser blasting cows, like Justin Smith blasting Bigfoots? <laughs> uh, I doubt it. Uh, I just think that a lot of it <clears throat> is, you know. Natural predators, for the most part, and with laser teeth. You no, know, I've looked into it a lot. <laughs> uh, they say the cuts are made laser-like, you know, but there's a lot of controversy on whether or not. Poor it is. cows. You know, the, God. The, the um the way things decay, you know, can make it look like a surgical cut when it's not. Whether I remember. It or not, I I really have no clue. I remember the very first episode of South Park with the cows. And with the aliens, and they're like, moo, 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 moo. The, it's probably the funniest episode ever. So people <laughs> watching this webcast, go watch the very first episode ever of South Park. It is hysterical. Because Cartman gets a total anal probe, and this giant like radar dish will pop out of his ass because of the aliens put this up his ass. It's very funny. It's hysterical, funniest thing. All right, Tammy, a couple questions I want to ask you. Number one. Do you think UFOs and aliens are real? And number two, what is your favorite UFO story? Um, I believe in in the possibility, but until I you know see solid proof or see something myself, then I really I don't know. Uh, my favorite story is uh, actually it, uh, it's footage that comes from the space shuttle, and it is uh, this is what is so compelling to me that there is something that is moving in the, I guess they're looking out the window of the space shuttle, and something is moving in one direction, and then zooms the other direction, and right behind it, something is fired from the Earth's surface up and just misses whatever was changing direction. Could it looked that have like... Been, could, wait a second, could that have been Ronald Reagan's Star Wars space defense program? That's mm -hmm. what I'm talking about. Could it? That's okay. the most. That was well, really interesting well, footage. It it's, been, yeah. Okay, yeah. so let's say for let's say for the sake of argument, yes, that was Ronald Reagan Star Wars Space Missile Defense Program, whatever you want to call it, in action, documented by the cameras on board the space shuttle. So you have this UFO kind of meandering mm -hmm. by, all of a sudden it turns around and zips away because all of a sudden it's like this thing goes shooting at it. All right, mm -hmm. that means whoever is visiting us are friendly. Because mm -hmm. we're like trying to like shoot them down, right? Kind of. That's kind of scary. Well, maybe it's us who yes, are that is scary. That what is scary is that we are firing things into outer space like that. You know, why are we firing things into outer space like that? Now let's that, talk just, about other things that could have happened. The space shuttle Columbia. We lost that ship on reentry because of uh, so-called the uh, the tile damage when it was launched. But right. Maybe it, if the, you know, for the conspiracy theorists out there, could say very well that maybe it got zapped by our own little UFO missile defense system. Mm -hmm. Just saying. I mean, no matter what, someone's going to have a different story, and there's going to be people that are going to believe it. Mm-hmm. 
However, that brings me back to Ronald Reagan and Jimmy Carter, two of our American presidents. Um, mm -hmm. One is highly respected. <laughs> Poor Jimmy. He never will get the respect he deserves. Um, but a darn well, nice guy. Right. And Actually. put and put the name on peanuts. Um, <laughs> you have two presidents that have said they have had sightings, and that says a lot. You know, you have mm -hmm. Steve Alcorn's mom that has seen a sighting. My mom has a friend when she worked in the um, airlines industry before she got married back in the um, 50s that was a pilot, and he and his crew witnessed something flying alongside their airplane, and the guy made the mistake of reporting it, and he told uh, his boss what he saw and the flight attendant, and et cetera, et cetera, and he was told, don't ever report the story ever again. You're going to be suspended without pay. And so he told my mom this story. He says he'll never, ever tell anybody anything if he sees anything like that ever again. So, you know, a lot of stuff happened in the 1940s and 50s, and that's probably because of our, our, our atomic program. Now, back in 1947, Steve, something occurred in Roswell, New Mexico, on July 7th. What happened? Well, that's, you know, that's up for controversy, but... Uh, the popular belief is that a UFO crashed in uh, on the Foster Ranch in uh, near. It's actually outside of Roswell. It wasn't actually in Roswell. And uh, you know, uh, the government says it was a weather balloon or a Project Mogul balloon. They later uh, changed it to. But you know, the witnesses all say you know there were bodies. There were you know debris that you couldn't explain. So. It's a, it's controversial, but you know I believe something something actually crashed there. But what it is, I I have no. Clue. Well, the next day, um, the the Roswell Army Airfield Public Information Officer, his name was Walter Hot, Hot, excuse me. He made a state saying that the yep. 509th Operations Group received a flying disc. And then the next day, or was it later that afternoon? Flying disc. Yeah. Right. It was a uh, change to oh, it was a, a military. It was the next day. Yeah. Okay, so this gentleman, I'm going to hold up a photo here. Well, the, the thing, Do you see this picture here? Can you see it? Yes. Jesse Jesse Marcel. Yeah. This is Jesse, Major be, yeah. Jesse Marcel. That would be Jesse Marcel, yeah. Okay, so um, for 30 years, the whole Roswell thing was quiet. I mean, it was a pretty good cover-up until uh, some ufologist, what was his name, Stanton Friedman, interviewed Major... Jesse yeah, Marcel? Stan Friedman. He's. Well, Stan Friedman found, I think, old newspaper articles about the Roswell crash. And he somehow found uh, Jesse Marcel. Stan Friedman is a. Um, oh, geez. What did I tell you he was, Rick? My uh, mind is well, he's a ufologist. Right uh, was he's, it a physicist a, or something uh, like that? Right, but he's. Yeah, he's a physicist. And he's. He, you know, we're into Bigfoot, so he's like the Dr. Meldrum of ufology, you know. So, um, very well-respected guy. But he found Jesse Marceau in 1979, and that's what made, uh, you know, Roswell popular again. The reason it became unpopular in the first place is because, you know, they had the first story. Walter Hout put out the first story under orders, actually, he put it out. And then the next day, he was under orders to change it. So... The media and the public bought the second story, you know, that it was a weather balloon, and then it just disappeared until 79 when uh, Friedman found Jesse Marceau and interviewed him. And then the story just took off and more witnesses came out, and it just, you know, it's what we know today as, as Roswell. Now, this man here, Robert Lazar, you've seen him before, you've heard about him. He claims to have worked at Area 51, and he says that's what they're testing, uh, awesome. UFO vehicles, things of that nature. He has no credibility because supposedly the schools that he attended has no record of him, things of that nature. So add, more, add that to the conspiracy theory. And he says that the aliens are from the, the star system Zeta Reticuli, Reticuli, I don't know how you say it. So you got to take that guy with a grain Some of salt. Kind of and then there's, of course, this, Steve. Alien autopsy, which I was totally sold on back in the 90s. I <laughs> thought it was real. I was so heartbroken when it turned out to be this elaborate hoax. You know, it's kind of like the whole Dr. Ketchum thing. It's like, God, I put all my eggs in a basket and I feel like the dumbest fool. 
we're used to hoaxes oh, yeah. around here, a, aren't we? I hear there's another autopsy, autopsy film coming out soon. Another <laughs> one? Oh, not, my God. Not an alien, though. A oh, friend no. of ours. Well, not such a friend of ours. No. Okay. Um, <laughs> was putting out an alleged uh, Bigfoot autopsy film. <laughs> oh, whatever. Okay. Oh. Sorry. Um, Sorry Tammy. To Yes. Tammy, Tammy, alien yes. autopsy. Did you think it was real? When I first saw it, I was, you know, very gullible. And, yeah, I was like, this is really amazing. I was so excited about it. And then came the disappointment. Right. I said, God. Okay. But then there was something else that happened back in the 90s. Excuse me, I'm going to have to cough. <coughs> Getting over a cold. Um... This, in Phoenix, um, it started in Henderson, Nevada, and um, multiple, multiple eyewitnesses uh, saw this in the sky. It's called the Phoenix Lights, the lights over Phoenix, back in 1997. Hundreds of people saw this. Hundreds. Mm -hmm. And we're now starting to enter the age... What's that? It was captured on video, even, and the governor of the state even saw it, the governor of, uh, of Arizona. Even. Right. So, uh, so. so, you know, it started in Henderson, Nevada, which is right over here by Vegas. Then um, the next eyewitness account was in um, Paulden, Arizona, then Prescott, then in Dewey, and then in Phoenix. I so, have a question. And, what? What? Okay, hold on just a second. Steve, my question is... <laughs> Oh, I love the hat. <laughs> got the hat. Uh, should I wear it like down because this mine. is serious or oaky okay. style? Okay, my question is, didn't you, they disprove that as being flares from the uh, military base no. and, and did all of this stuff with the elaborate the flares dropping or I don't know what it they well, But the, anyway, wasn't that there debunked? Were flares. There were flares, but it, it, the times don't match up. And you don't get flares from Henderson, Nevada, all the way to Phoenix, Arizona. Right, so that's a little far. It doesn't happen that way. So yeah. were the so, flares were a, kind of like a, a cover-up from the real event? They they came back and did the I, flares? I'm not so sure that they were a cover-up as much as it was a coincidence. There were flares dropped that night. And I think some a lot of people think that the footage that you know the, they show over the mountain or whatever it is, the real famous footage that you see on the news all the time. Right. That's what was being blamed on the flares. But the times don't match up. And so, um, no, I, I don't think flares was actually the answer. Maybe some people saw the flares and reported them as UFOs, but it couldn't account for nearly all the sightings that night. It was, so, I remember okay. seeing This it was for 106 it was, it was an minutes. Event. This was almost two hours people saw this. Yeah. That's a long time for flares right. to be flares hanging around, last isn't it? Two hours. Right. <laughs> okay, just saying. But the hat is messing my hair up. But it looks so good, Tammy. Oh, okay. Well, I'll wear it for you, Steve. Okay. All right. This couple, Steve. You don't have to. <laughs> Betty and be Barney Betty Hill. And Barney Hill. What's their story? Well. <laughs> Their story is actually one of the ones that I really like, and I find it one of the most credible stories. Uh, Betty and Barney were out for a drive, and they saw, uh, you know, a light. Uh, I guess they described it as like stars, and you know, but it got closer and brighter. And then they lost some time. I mean, they lost a lot of time, and they didn't know what happened. And then under hypnosis, they were said to have been abducted by aliens and the the reason I like the story is because of all the things that Betty came up with afterwards it, it wasn't so much the, the story itself but she drew a star map and that star map was of a star system that we didn't even know and it, it's the same star system that Bob Lazar talked about Zeti uh, the Zeta is it a real it's a real right. star system same though star yes system. yes it's a real star system yeah, okay. but they didn't. They didn't. They didn't know. They didn't know at the time that she drew this map. She would. She wasn't a scientist or anything like that. So that was the one thing that's always uh, made it very credible to me. The other thing, and you know, this was in the '60s. Betty mm -hmm. was white and Barney was black. You're not going to come out with a story like that, you know, because you've already got enough ridicule. 
for being a mixed race couple back in the 60s, right. you know. Right, that would so, be difficult. And then she had, you know, she had uh, uh, stains on her dress. And the dress still exists, actually. So Betty died, I think, a couple years ago. And even, you know, to the day she died, she stood by her story. Uh, Barney died quite a while before that. Has and there been some the DNA story, so. samples taken the from that dress? The only issue I... <laughs> Here we go with Monica Lewinsky. Uh, I think Dr. Oh, yeah, Elder Ketchum. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Here we go. Oh, dear. No, no. I don't, I don't remember if there were uh, was DNA taken, but the, the, the <clears throat> dress still exists, and so if it hasn't been tested, it still can be, yeah. But it's probably but, yeah, degraded. Yeah, I mean, the story, or... that was, that's one of my favorite stories of all time. Okay, I have a question, Steve. Yeah, but they can still tell, you know, something from it. Can they? Go okay. Ahead. Okay, my question is, um, uh, I spoke one time to a mental health professional, a psychiatrist, about alien abduction theories. Have you ever heard of this? You know where I'm going with this? That there, <laughs> we, there we, don't is, want to, we don't want to go there. Psychiatrist. Uh, uh, I'm hiding. <laughs> who would this mental health professional be, Tim? I, mean, I think I may already know. No, this is not. This is back before I knew you guys. No, no, somebody else. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. This is a different. Okay. okay. Sorry. No, this is a real. This is a real <laughs> question because I've always oh, been you did, curious you about didn't mean UFOs. So health patient. No, no. This is from the giving side, not the receiving okay, I'm side. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, and that there is an actual uh, condition, a mental, like. Uh, uh, diagnosis for alien abduction syndrome or something like that. I don't know exactly what it's called, but that there are a lot of people out there that have, you know, what seem like real experiences of alien abductions, but they are not real. It's it's made up in their mind, but to them they feel real. What do you think about that theory? Uh, yeah, I I agree that that's probably true. In ninety at least 90% of the cases, I would say. But you got people like Betty and Barney who came up with things that nobody knew at the time. Right. And then had physical evidence and things of that nature. So in some of the cases, I, not, I'm not saying that alien abductions are real. I really don't know. But, um, you know, some of the cases have to be, uh, have some truth to them. Well, if an alien Ooh, is look. that fine... Uh, then I want to be abducted by him. He's that good looking. <laughs> <laughs> but so what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, um, I'd say in the majority of cases, especially when hypnosis is involved and things like that, I would have to say probably not. But you know, like in Betty and Barney Hill's case, and if you're familiar with Travis Walton and those kind of stories, I would say yeah. Something okay. actually happened. Whether it was yeah. aliens or not, I can't be certain. So didn't she say and when she was being um, hypnotized that the aliens told her that this was like a trading route? That this is where they would trade with other planets? Right, right. That's what they told her. Or that's what she said they told her. Hmm. So... Makes you wonder if aliens are truly coming to this they planet. They told her a lot of things, but... Right, they uh, seem to don't have anything like under classified. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right, so I haven't given my opinion yet on the whole subject of UFO and aliens. You guys ready? Oh, boy, here we go. Okay, yes. <laughs> um, I was recently having a discussion with my guy... My with is giving me issues again, so you'll have to bear with me. Okay. Um, I was recently having uh, this conversation with my guy because he asked me about... Uh, what I think about aliens and UFOs. And it was coincidental that we were already planning on doing this show. And here's what I told him. Nature, in on itself, is very violent. It's dog, dog eat dog. You know, um, consume or be consumed. It's um, aggressive and invasive. Nature, life itself, it's, it's all about, you know, Conquest, when you think about it, viruses on the very, you know, minuscule level is all about um, invading and taking over and um, propagating its own um, species, so to speak. That being said, 
And that's life here on Earth. It's the circle of life, whatever you want to call it. That being said, if life is truly out there in the universe and we are not alone, which I do believe we are not alone because we come from a very old universe. It's over 13.5 billion years old. We're the new kids on the block. Uh, life would have to have developed the same way elsewhere. Granted, there would be different kinds of conditions, different amounts of light, um, the Goldilocks zone, as they like to put it, the Earth is in. You know, you got to have water, you got to have light, got to have this, got to have that. But then, you know, there's always those exceptions to the rule. But nonetheless, as a whole, as a generalization, life elsewhere would be just as harsh as it is here. So, would you care that, that you're walking along and you accidentally step on an ant hill? and you crush an entire colony of ants. Do you, do you care? No. So that being said, aliens who are highly evolved than us and are able to travel such great distances to come here, how do they feel about us? What's their culture like? You know, I mean, Americans, we don't leave anybody behind. Our soldiers will always pick up their fallen and bring them back. Other countries right now are killing their own people. Look at Syria. You know what I mean? So life is scary. Aliens coming to this planet? What's their motive? <laughs> you know, I mean, come on, think about it. To say hi? To come and buy the latest share, to share a CD in stores? To get the newest movie, World War Z? I mean, what? why are they coming here? What's, what's so great about us? Are you like a science experiment? What do you What do you guys think? Why would they come here, Steve? Why, if they're real? Uh, well, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know that they'd even want to come here. I mean, look at us, you know. But if they, they are, you know, it's it's what you said. We could be one of two things. We could be an ant hill to them, you know, and they could just step on us, or we could be a science experiment to them, or or something. If we're just a trade route to them, they don't. They wouldn't care. You know, like Betty Hill said, we're a trade route. They wouldn't care. That you know, we're just collateral damage if something goes wrong, right? But if we're, you know, we study ants too. We don't just step on them. So it could be. It could be a little bit of each. I don't know. Tammy, what are your thoughts? I sure as hell wouldn't come here. <laughs> Well, um, if this is indeed a trade route, then they are into bartering. Uh, they probably have some kind of a, a system for, you know, payment or whatever. Are we going to end up being a commodity, a crop to harvest, a food source? Ooh. Yeah, X-Files. X-Files is scary. The whole yeah. black, black oil and it gets in your system and you have an alien that develops inside your body. Oh my gosh, that was mm -hmm. creepy. Mm -hmm. you know? And then yeah. a lizard pops out of your chest and attacks everybody in the uh, room. And hopefully you've got Sigourney Weaver there to save you. All right. Yeah. <laughs> let's, just, let's talk about the grays. That's what they're generalized as being called. I mean, they're gray skin. They've got really big heads, really big almond-shaped eyes, very small features for like a nose, itty-bitty little mouth, you know, long fingers, short little bodies. Um... Do you think that's what they look like, Steve? Do you think there's a lot of data that backs that up? What? What's up with this? Well, the Greys didn't become popular until after, I believe it was um, Close Encounters came out. Close Encounters of the Third Kind. So I think a lot of it can be pop culture, you know, what they okay. might actually look like. And also, don't forget, that's but, also uh, with Barney, Betty and Barney, they described them as two. Right, they did. They did. And I think that's where, you know, the idea of what they look like for the movie came from is some witness accounts. But it didn't become popular because there was all sorts of... In fact, they, they claim there's like 54 or 57 varieties of aliens that are visiting the Earth. Okay, that's, that's just way too much. I can't I cannot wrap my head around it. little scene. green men. And, way too many. No. Way too many. Well, yes. I'm just saying. That's what I mean, I, I, have, I have anxiety issues when I go to the DMV. And there's like over 57 different kinds of species of humans up in the day, so... Oh Aliens do look good in green. <laughs> but, what I'm, but what I'm trying to say is, you know, they could be, they could be the greys, 
But before uh, Close Encounters came out, there were all sorts of different... I mean, that's where we got the term Little Green Men was before Close Encounters. We don't hear about Little Gray Men. You know what I mean? So, uh, who knows? I, I think it's it's possible. The body just doesn't seem like it was is fit for space travel. But they could be interdimensional. I don't know. They could come from the center of the Earth, for all I know. But... They sure one of my friends, <laughs> one of my friends in Maine. Um, I don't know if you guys know her. Her name is Cat. She's a ghost hunter, and she has seen some strange things lately um, near her property. Some glowing lights in the sky. So that's up in Maine. Your mom had this sighting. What? They're in Erie, right, Steve? Uh, Wattsburg, Pennsylvania, which is south of Erie. Yeah. Okay. How close is that to Grand Valley? Out of curiosity. Uh, you know, 40, 50 miles. Because Jarrett has said there's been some strange things he's seen, some strange lights well, that look like explosions. I'll, I'll tell you, you, I'll tell you, this area of the country, especially the closer to Lake Erie you get, and especially between where I'm at near Erie and Cleveland, more specifically like Euclid, which is on this, my side of Cleveland, uh -huh. towards, uh, Pennsylvania, we get all sorts. I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds of reports a year of strange lights in the sky. I've seen them myself. I mean, they're here. What they are, I mean, is yet to be determined. But, yeah, there's a ton of that kind of stuff in this area. All right. The Allegheny. Especially, uh, especially you guys, surrounding the lake. You guys are by the Allegheny Forest. I'm about right. 60 miles from there, yeah. And that's a pretty big forest. There's a lot of stuff that's out there, and you've got these giant lakes, you know, who knows, there could be like, I hate to sound this, oh god, I hate to say this, there could be like a secret oh, UFO, there could be like a secret UFO base somewhere out there, and no one would know about uh, it. A lot, of, a lot of people think Lake Erie, because of all of the sightings, because of all the lights we get here, could have a secret, they call it USOs, on a, a Unidentified submersible ob objects, I guess. Oh my gosh! So yeah, they they believe that. Uh, I mean, the sightings histories go back, you know, forever. So they believe that you know Lake Erie could be a UFO base. Here's Is a, it? I have no clue, but it could be, I guess. Um. We think that on Earth there was microbial life that evolved into dinosaurs. They got wiped out by something that hit the Earth, apparently. And then, you know, 65 million years later, here we are. But there could have been other things that could have been here that we have yet to have um, publicly disclosed. You know what I mean? So there could have... Maybe aliens are not aliens. Maybe they were originally from Earth and are now coming back from having traveled the stars. We don't know, right? I mean, we think we know everything. Human arrogance is so blinding that there are so many things out there that are probably right underneath our noses that we have yet to discover. You know, I mean... Well, we discover new things every day, so... It's you know, new, new primates are being discovered in Indonesia and things like that, you know? Um, in the Amazon jungle, we probably don't even know half the shit that's out there. I think they're real close to, to discovering the orang pendek there in Sumatra. I think, I think that's a real animal, and I think... And the people the there, year, so we'll find and the out people, about that. right, and the people there in that country, they they know it's real. That's us mm -hmm. Western culture fuckers are like, um, is it real? Hmm. Where's the photo? <laughs> Adam oh. Davies. Adam Davies has been doing some great work, and Adam's a friend of mine, and I, I just wanted to give him a shout out because he's he does some great work with the Iran Pendek and stuff like that. So. Well, guys, I think we've covered quite a bit. We talked about Roswell. We talked about. Uh, the alien autopsy hoax that really crushed me. Um, the lights over Phoenix, which to me is very scary. Uh, we talked about what Tammy thought is uh, very interesting. The space shuttle uh, footage of the thing being almost shot down by. Um, what else? Uh, we talked about um, Robert Lazar, um, Ronald Reagan, the president's, uh, your mother, Steve, her, her eyewitness account. Mm -hmm. You know, all the weird stuff that's going on. You know, I mean, it's fun to talk about. It's, it's kind of scary, guys. I mean, I think Bigfoot's more fun. Bigfoot, you know, we talk about Bigfoot and Sasquatch. It's a creature of this planet. Okay, depending on who you ask, because there's polities. Um, it requires <laughs> food. It requires water, shelter, you know, and aliens, mm -hmm. who knows what they need or what they want. That's 
that's a whole different ballpark for me. That scares me. I'm, uh, mm -hmm. I'm, yeah. I scared you when I said harvest and food source, right? Oh, <laughs> uh, uh. You're going to have bad dreams now. Oh. Not with you, with your What's guns, Tammy. Bam! <laughs> What's that movie that they had the cookbook and it turned out to be a, a cookbook for humans? How, how to prepare, how to serve humans, yeah. I don't know, but I remember V. Was v was friends. a great miniseries on NBC. Remember V? Oh, I Where the you. aliens pretended to be our friends, but they were really lizards, and they were harvesting us for food? Oh, my God. Uh-huh. That's what I'm talking uh, about. I love V. That was a great show. Truth is stranger than fiction. Well, speaking of truth being stranger than fiction, I happen to be friends with Diana from V. She's one of my friends on Facebook. Ooh, oh, sweet. Nice. She likes my artwork. I've drawn her many ways. Ah, so. uh, you have a lot of celebrity connections, don't you, Rick? Not like that. That's kind of cool, you know. <laughs> well, everybody, um, this any. has been exciting uh, to talk about <laughs> aliens and UFOs finally. Um, everybody, check out SweetSassyGlassy.com for uh, her amazing Bigfoot and alien pendants. Tammy, I'm going to pull yours up as the main image. Look at that. Look at that. That is so cool. The truth is out there. Truth is out there. So, Steve, Steve, do you want to do another episode on UFO and aliens? I mean, we covered quite a bit of ground this time. Yeah, uh, the one thing we didn't get to talk about is the the same night that my mom saw her you know, UFO sighting. Um, there was a, a really famous case from Erie, Erie, PA, which is you know 20 miles from where she saw her the same day. Well, well, so then we will close. No, no, no. Why, why don't we talk about that? Why don't we end on that note? Give us a little bit of that. Okay, it was July of 1966, and uh, there was several witnesses. Uh, a lady named Betty Clem, a guy named Doug Tibbetts, uh, a lady named Anita Hayfley, or Hazley, it depends on which version of the story, and a guy named Gerald DeBell, and, and Gerald went to get, their, their car got stuck in the sand, and so Gerald went off to get some help, and after Gerald left, it became dark, right? So mm -hmm. they saw what they thought was a star, and it just kept getting bigger and bigger and brighter and brighter, and eventually it landed on the beach. It actually landed on the beach. So Doug, um, right, at, right after it landed on the beach, uh, Doug went and found the uh, park police, or they came by to check on them. And um, so the park police officer, because it's a state park, uh, and Doug went off to look, and when they went off to look, Betty and Anita, and there was actually two children in the car, said that there was a big, uh, hairy creature. They couldn't see his face, so it was like Bigfoot, basically. Oh now, whether, God. You know, big, I'm not getting into Bigfoot the Bigfoot UFO, UFO story. Connection. I don't want to know oh. anything about that. But. <laughs> Sorry. Was, was there a portal but involved? Anyway, anyway so the interdimensional window. <laughs> uh, well, here, here's the thing: the car was damaged, right? Uh huh. There was a tree that was damaged. The next morning, they went out and investigated. There was a tripod marks on the beach, and they said it couldn't have been made by a shovel. It had to have been, you know, weight that caused it. And it, the Air Force came and investigated. It was part of Project Blue Book, and it was actually one of the 701 unknown uh, cases. So it's a really interesting story. Someday I'd like to talk about it a little bit more. Guys, what is wrong with me? I cannot stand the whole Bigfoot UFO alien connection. It drives me nuts. Why? Am I a jerk? Am I closed-minded? You know, I mean, there are a lot of people out there that think that, you know, there's orbs they've seen hovering around Bigfoot creatures and stuff like that. I mean, maybe that's why Bigfoots have been protected. Maybe the aliens got their back or something. I don't know, but that's kind of weird, right? Unless they're another science project. What? What? What's the story? Tammy. Um, well, I think I will go send my friend David Paulitis a message and ask him because he's an expert in this area. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. You had a few questions for him when you went and saw him talk about Bigfoot stepping out of interdimensional doorways. Hi, Dave. And what, did, what was his story? Do you remember what he told you? Uh, well, he was actually sharing a story uh, that was uh, out of a book, and the, it was, uh, oh, the witness was a former FBI person who saw a 
rectangular window appear over a field and a big foot step out of it and gallop across the field or something something along those lines. Uh-huh. You know, I never get the story straight and that that upsets him too, but um anyway, so I just don't know. Uh, okay. <laughs> I just don't know. <laughs> All right. I, I think stories it, I, are entertaining. <laughs> You know, that's all they are. They're our story. That's all they are, really, at the end of the day. I mean, nothing can be, you know, scientifically tested. But so when you see I, physical evidence, like uh, tripod marks in the sand, something like that, that's compelling. When you see physical evidence of something right. that is left behind, and or, or maybe, like, radiation or, you know, something okay, like that. Okay, let's talk about something real quick. I completely forgot about this. Crop circles. Yeah. Are aliens really like bored and they're like, yeah. you know, got their little laser yeah. pen in the sky going, yeah, we're gonna fuck up with their wheat field, yeah, the corn crops, yeah. you know, I mean, is it graffiti? What, what are they doing? Mm -hmm. If that's truly aliens doing crop circles, what? What's up? With I, that? yeah, I don't. I, yeah, that's... I don't think it's aliens doing crop circles myself. <laughs> right. Well, people have admitted to doing it, and you know, college students and there are groups that go out and do it as a hobby now. And, you know, they come up with all these, they're artists, they come up with all these elaborate designs, they do it in the middle of the night, it is possible to do it without damaging the, the stalks of whatever crop they're, you know, bending over to make the circles, and they come up with all kinds of fantastic uh, geometric and, you know, whatever designs, and people still... <coughs> buy into the alien theory. Then there's some one piece of footage of um, some lights over a field and crop circles appeal, uh, appearing, but I think that has been debunked. That, that was a hoax, though. Yeah. But wow. it's cute. It's debunked. good footage. It's cute footage, but very entertaining. It's neat looking. All right. To me, Bigfoot said UFOs do not mix. Sorry, guys. People that right. are watching, I'm probably going to get hate mail again. But you know what? Hey, my opinion. I don't think Bigfoot and UFOs mix. I think two, the both of them are totally different, separate. Um, if Bigfoot and UFOs are somehow connected, it's because aliens are, uh, I don't know, uh, giving them preferential treatment and are protecting them from humans. And that's way out there in left field. So, yeah. Don't think that's I, the case. I had... I had I had a theory given to me the other day by a guy, and I don't know, he could be right. Um, he said that maybe Bigfoots are, when you know, the little gray guys, when they come down here, maybe it's their, like, 4x4 four four off-road vehicle that they use. Maybe the body of Bigfoot is the... Okay. It's a Someone's been watching guys. Men in Black, because we saw something like that in Men in Black. <laughs> the blue inside the one guy's head. Okay. All, All right. right. Well, no, it's a very respectable guy. He asked, he asked me about it, and I said, I don't know. But it's a possibility, I guess. <laughs> all right, that's the thing with UFOs and aliens. We could talk for hours and hours of all the different theories and ideas and stories. But you know what? When it comes right down to it, all we got to do is keep looking up into the sky. And on that note, thanks for joining us, everybody, for this very special After Hours with Victor, talking about UFOs and aliens. Say goodbye, guys. Goodbye, guys. <laughs> we gone.